Coming up to nearly six months of using the S23 Ultra pretty much exclusively, the cracks are starting to show. No, it's not that bad actually, but like anything, after a few months of usage, you start to see some things that could definitely be improved. And some other things that actually drive me nuts. But to balance things out today, I'm gonna share some of the things that I love and also the things I hate about this phone. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. And the first one that comes to mind is something that, you know, you kind of take it for granted after using Android devices for a while or Samsung devices specifically, is multitask. iPhone users, look away now. I can't believe how good these phones are for, you know, opening multiple windows. You can open a lot of stuff and hook it up to decks and things like that, but I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you can just multitask between two apps, right? It's just the, the simple, sometimes, writing a note at the bottom of the screen and looking up uh, uh, some notes that you, you picked up from a website or an app or whatever it might be. It could be transferring money to someone online on your banking app at the bottom, looking on a WhatsApp message at the top. It's a tiny little detail, but man, it saves lives. So every time I use something like that and I go, oh, it's so nice to have. The next one is a bit of an unsung hero, as my friend Daniel from uh, Tech With Benefits would say. I think he said that anyway. It's the S Pen. This little thing here, I mean, when I had the S22 Ultra, I don't even think I ever took it out of the phone. Did it come with one? I don't even know. But on the S23 Ultra, oh my gosh, it's just delightful to use. I'm not gonna use delightful again. I can't. But on the S23 Ultra, it's just amazing to use. I mean, <laughs> it's not better. Just to write a note is easy enough and I'm starting to get used to it. It's so responsive. It's a weird one as well because, you know, I'm used to the Apple Pencil, for example, on the iPad and it's very slippery, you know. I don't know what they've done with the S Pen on the Tab S8 Ultra as well, but this, it just feels nice on the glass. I mean, I don't have a screen protector, but without screen protector, it just feels fantastic. A whole set of features as well, like the hand gestures or air gestures or whatever that you can do with the pen that I'm, I don't even use. But editing photos is something that I do pretty much on a daily basis. I use Lightroom uh, on, on this phone sometimes just to kind of mask things out. And with the pen, it transforms that experience into something that is like, is even better than doing it on a computer. And the next one is one that, again, you kind of take it for granted after a while, is the fingerprint scan. I mean, this is just incredible, right? Let me just lock it. It's just incredible. I mean, it's so good. Again, you you, st you stop thinking about it after a while because you know you, d you don't notice it. It's a tiny little clicking sound as well that I, you know it's the small thing sometimes. You know, cut that off. Would I prefer to have it on the power button like the fold? Absolutely, I I love that one as well. But the under display one here, yeah, it's fantastic. I notice it fails sometimes if you're like outside and it's raining. Some of the droplets might kind of block the, the fingerprint sensor and it, it, it will fail then. But a quick wipe and it will work again, no problem. And the next one is performance. And I'm used to the Exynos version right, of the S22 Ultra and the S21 Ultra. And I don't know if it's a combination of One UI and Snapdragon or just the fact that it's Snapdragon that makes the whole thing so much faster. It doesn't matter what I throw at this, I did pay 150 pounds more for the 512 gig version, which gives you the 12 gig memory. But honestly, it was well worth the upgrade. I'm not even sure if the 8 gig is, is presenting any issues. I haven't seen any videos of people complaining because they got the 8 gig instead of the 12 gig. So I think even that one might be okay. There were a couple of occasions where I hadn't rebooted for days, if not weeks. And even things like Gmail started to play up a little bit. You know, I was kind of trying to respond to an email and it was really painfully slow to, to see the, the characters appearing on the screen. After a reboot, he solved it, but those are very rare occasions. I haven't seen any bugs or anything like that. In comparison with what I was experiencing on the iOS 16 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which drove me nuts to the point where, you know, I had to sell my iPhone and get rid of it. Night and day, amazing performance. Now, the next thing that I love about this phone is video and audio recording quality. Notice the recording quality aspect there, because I'm gonna talk about something that I hate and it will involve that. But when it comes to recording audio and recording video, my gosh, you know, they really, really made a, a big jump here. In, in comparison to what where we were, the S22 Ultra and the S21 Ultra, even AK on this phone, I've done a lot of videos about AK on this, which is no longer a gimmick. It's, it's truly something that you can use. And I've been super impressed by the quality there. But for me, it's 4K24 or 4K30 is the one that I go to for the most things that I record here in the studio or outside if I'm, you know, if I don't have my professional camera with me, that's the mode I go to. And man, it's just, yeah, it is great. It's usable footage for a professional level, not something that I could say about the previous versions of this phone, right? The S22 or the S21 Ultra. And that's mainly because the iPhone has always been so strong, right? The 13 Pro Max, the well, 14 Pro Max as well, the 12 Pro Max, they've always been very strong on video. But this is the first time that I can say safely 
I'm not missing the 14 Pro Max video because I've got this and is able to cope with everything I throw at it. Now, before I talk about the five things that I hate about this phone, just a reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it. And after this video, have a look at the channel. If you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed as well. I'm here at least once a week with a down to earth tech video for you. The first thing that really annoys me is facial recognition. It doesn't actually work every time. I've tried adding multiple appearances. You know, you can add multiple faces, wearing glasses, no glasses, cap, no cap, and no cap. <laughs> it sucks. I don't know if it's the lighting sometimes, you know, if I'm outside and it's really bright outside, I notice that the facial recognition really struggles. But to be honest, in isolation, it's not a major issue because the fingerprint scanner is brilliant. But after a while, it does get annoying. Luckily, we don't have to wear masks anymore, right? But I can imagine if we still had to wear masks, this would cause some issues for me. This next one, I'm not even sure what it's called, but it's when you're trying to copy and paste, you know, a code that you receive from your bank, from, you know, Amazon or whatever it is that you're trying to sign into, you get like a one-time password and you try to copy that and paste it into whatever it is, right? Maybe a browser or the app itself. And honestly, nine times out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10, it's a, it's a struggle. It's so small when it appears on the screen that you try to copy it and you end up clicking on the message and you come off the app. Some apps like banking apps might even time out by the time you got it. You know, it's just a nightmare to use. I'm not even sure if that's uh, Samsung's fault. Maybe there's something in one UI that could be improved and make, just make the code bigger, right? Identify that it is a code that we're receiving and make it bigger with a big button copy or even better, just skip the whole process and, and paste the thing into the into the app that's open. Anyway, it's just something that I know in iOS, for example, I've got loads of issues with iOS, but I think on iOS, this feature is a little bit better. And the next one is the speakers. When I reviewed this as a comparison between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which I got rid of, the speakers on the 14 Pro Max was something that I thought was definitely better than this. I know it's subjective and a lot of you in the comments will tell me that the speakers on this phone are the best out there. The iPhone after 80% of volume, you know, it was kind of distorted. So in that, in that aspect of loudness, even though the iPhone is louder, the quality after 80% was bad. Up to 80%, you know, if you, if you kind of just look at the same level of volume on both, I did think the speakers on the iPhone 14 Pro Max specifically were better than this one. It felt a little bit more like spatial audio in a way, but you know, it's not really spatial audio, but it did feel a little bit like that. You can go into the equalizer, of course, Dolby Atmos is on, but you can go into the equalizer, make it a little bit better and tweak it for whatever you're watching, but then everything else is gonna be tweaked to that you know, to that setting. I like to leave Dolby Atmos on auto and just hope that the phone will figure out if I'm watching Netflix or Disney or watching YouTube, we'll figure out the sort of content I'm watching and adjust the sound accordingly. There's one scenario, and I know this is not gonna be everyone's case because most people will just plug this into the Bluetooth speakers on your car, but sometimes I don't do that. And I just wanna watch a video or something like that quickly on, on YouTube while I'm in the car without disrupting the car system. And the speakers do feel a little bit teeny in that scenario. And I'm not sure if it's because, you know, the phone is in a certain way. For example, when I use the Fold instead of the S23 Ultra and I put it in the car like this, I get a much better sound quality coming out of the Fold 4 instead of the S23 Ultra. So I'm not sure if that's, you know, a unique issue to the S23 Ultra. Or maybe it's just me. Let me know if you're finding that issue as well. Now, this next one is gonna be a little bit controversial is the battery. What did you say? The battery on the S23 Ultra? It's one of the best phones, if not the best phones when it comes to a battery. And I'm saying I hate it. Let me explain. I do love the battery on this phone and there's nothing that I've used that comes anywhere near it. But it can trick you. It's so good that it lasts so long that sometimes you don't worry about, you know, charging overnight or whatever. And you think, okay, it's gonna last until the next day anyway. But that next day, sometimes it can trick you. I found myself sometimes looking at it and go, oh, that's 12% left. It's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go out and do whatever I need to do. And then bam, you know, it's dead. And maybe that's because I'm used to the iPhone or I've used the iPhone for so long. When it did get to like sub 5%, it did feel like he was holding on for dear life and he would not die. You know, he would still have quite a long time. I don't know, it felt like forever to actually die. Even on 1%, you're thinking he's gonna die any minute now and he's, you know, he kept going. On this, after, yeah, sub 10%, he could die literally any moment. So yeah, I just wish it would tell you exactly how long you've got without these estimations and, you know, be a little bit more consistent because between, you know, 100 to say 40%, it takes a long time. When it gets to sub that, you start to panic a little bit. But And the fifth thing that I hate, again, it's probably nitpicking here, but it's the camera performance. The actual resulting picture, absolutely no issues with it, you know, especially in like expert raw mode. The video quality on this is fantastic. Even low light pictures. I know a lot of people complain about low lights on this phone. I have no issues with that. I mean, you do have to, 
going to manual and know what you're doing a little bit. But that aside is actually the performance when you want to do something quickly, right? You might be like a kid or, you know, like a racing car, whatever it might be that you're trying to do very quickly. Definitely nothing wrong with the quality and it's actually hard to replicate the issue. But every now and then I get this problem. It's the speed at which you try to open the camera app and sometimes it stutters. I mean, right now, typically it's fine, right? It's not gonna happen when I'm trying to show you. But every now and then, it's that little stutter before it comes up. I don't know, it could be something like half a second. You know, it's not a major issue. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does annoy me. It just happened then. Did I, did I pick, I don't think you picked that up. That's a shame. Like I said, you know, the, the resulting picture is not a problem. And I don't think it's the shutter lag that a lot of people reported since the phone came out. With all the updates and whatnot, also the type of pictures that I take, I don't actually experience the shutter lag, but you know, it's there for, for other people, and I'm, but I'm not gonna comment on it because I haven't experienced it. I do wonder if some of this stuff is just me or you know, you're experiencing as well, so please share in the comments as well, or if you think that there's things that I completely missed <laughs> that uh, I should have covered in this video, let me know. But let me level with you. It's been almost six months and I've been using this instead of my iPhone, which you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been, it's been tricky trying to mix the S23 Ultra as my main device with all my other Apple devices that I've got in my life. And the reason it's a big deal for me is because it's been 15 years, right, that I've been using iPhones, you know, since the first one. But I think I found a really decent compromise to have Android and Apple devices living in almost harmony. I covered exactly how I've done that in this video over here and all the things that I love about the S23 Ultra in these videos over here as well. See you soon.